Well, it looks like we're gonna be going to... In I messed that up. I tried. After months at sea, we reached our goal. The rich Malabar coast of India. Land of a thousand gods and a haven for spices, gold, and silver. In the brackish lagoons of Kerala, among temples dedicated to strange serpent gods, we established our trading posts in the cities of Kananur and Cochin. From these cities, my captain and his son Lorenzo cunningly manipulated the feuding rajas and sultans. They maneuvered through the politics of spice and faith, always with an eye for the most profitable outcome. One Hindu prince, however, defied us. This nameless ruler of Calicut, known only by the title the he, he doesn't Zamarin, have a name. threatened to break the carefully crafted deals and rivalries from which Portugal profited. My sword and shrewd tongue, giving no credence to differences of religion or race, he gained allies in the Rajas, in the Sultans, and in rulers as far away as Egypt and Venice. Even our allies among the Indians fell for his intrigue. The treacherous Kolathiri Raja, Prince of Kananur, betrayed us for the Zamorin's gold. Surrounded by enemies, it seemed that the hands of fate had turned so quickly against us. Uh oh, Spaghetti-O. Alright. Choose one of the following objectives. Defeat the Zamorin and Kola Theory Raja. Build and defend a wonder. And then, uh... So we do one or the other. You do wonder or the other! <laughs> oh boy. Uh... Top limit of 200 and do not need to build houses. Aggressiveness is critical. I would say again, aggression is critical. Loot enemy buildings for resources. Some buildings provide bonus resources. A Fatoria, uh, uh, a Fatoria can provide steady resources in exchange for population room. This actually is one of those few times where Fatorias are good. Uh, the enemy relies on a gold con or they rely on economy outside Kananor, so do not limit your attacks to inside the city. The fast-moving units of the Hindu pirates make great raiders, provided you choose to ally with them. Otherwise, defeating the pirates will bring a surplus of resources. Uh, Francisco de Almeida and his son Lorenzo are besieged in Fort Sant'Angelo in Cananor after being betrayed by the Kola Theory Raja, uh, ruler of the city. Said Raja commands elephants, camels, light calves, swordsmen, and archers. His city was a Portuguese ally during the reign of the previous Raja, whose recent death sparked a succession dispute. The new Raja seized the throne with the backing of the Samoran, and in return, he is vowed to push the Portuguese into the sea. The Zamoran, the cunning ruler of Calicut, has elephants, camels, cavalry archers, swordsmen, hand cannoneers, and siege to assist the Raja. His campments outside Kananor will be difficult to challenge directly, but his, his supply lines to the south may prove prone to infiltration. I'm making words up as I go. The Hindu pirate, led by the slippery pirate lord Timoji, occupy Anjadeva, an island off the coast. Making contact with the pirates either through war or peace may be in Portugal's best interest. Okay, this one starts out hot and dirty, so be ready to go. So yeah, you're going to want to convert two of these elephants right away. So we have this fortress that's on this little peninsula in the middle of the enemy city. So yeah, again, this is a very much the slow roll, slow push sort of scenario. We have this little fortress here, but we're going to need to expand out into the city. Uh, Kananor is essentially the dummy AI version of the Kola Theory Raja. 
who's the one who's sort of uh, actively, you know, with the production buildings and whatnot. So yeah, destroying buildings gives loot. It's kind of a cool concept. Wait, what are you doing, monk? No! Convert the Ellie Archer. So that's why I made it the queued up those fire ships a moment ago, if you noticed. We are under heavy attack. Our fort is under attack by the Lombards. Anyway, let's hope this is enough. You have to kill one cannon galleon, and then if you kill that one ga cannon galleon, uh, they won't be able to make any more cannon galleons. And then your life becomes way easier. So yeah, they do have a small navy, but boom. Anyway, these towers and castles and whatnot are real annoying. Uh, we do have some villagers, and we can make certain buildings, including town centers, and more villagers and whatnot, but we can't build, I think, any... Actually, no, I think we can build pretty much everything, we just... there aren't any resources to gather. At least not, except over here, which is where they have their, their base, which isn't exactly uh, useful to us. I didn't lose my Bombard Cannon, did I? Why do I feel like I lost my Bombard Cannon? Anyway, we really don't have many resources. And we're kind of reliant on uh, waiting for some important buildings like this castle to go down. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to convert that guy. I kind of try and save my conversions for elephants or camels. And of course it's like uphill against this castle. Okay, one more should do the trick. Should give us some resources. Yeah, that gave us a lot of resources. So, let's make a Fatoria. Wait, why do we have 180 pop limit? I thought we had 200. Pop limit of 200, but do not need to build houses. That says 180. You lie! Thank you. Okay, let's fall back a little bit. Damn it. Yeah, since we're not really having villagers to fuel our eco, we can just use the Fatorias. Yeah, it's not as good as income as normal villagers working, but because our income is being supplemented by the raises, like uh, speaking in CBA lingo, 
Well, I know that should make certain of my viewers happy. Hello, heater. Anyway, uh, not only are organ guns great and fun, which is why we're making them, uh, but perhaps more importantly, they don't require many upgrades. Anyway, honestly, I'm probably going to do the wonder route. Uh, there's another... In the, in the next scenario, you also have... It's essentially the same thing. Like, you can either build and defend a wonder, or you can defeat all your enemies. So I think in that one, I'm going to be defeating all the enemies, and in this one, I'll be building the wonder. Just because of the next scenario, we get to make units. Or make... You know, have an economy and stuff. That's good. Back to even raising these little houses is good. Oh yeah, we should also get... Oh wait, no, you can't build. You can't build all of these buildings, so you can't build drop-off sites or houses. Um... Build that there. No. Okay, before I lose more villagers. Yeah, this one definitely has a pretty intense opening. I mean, it's probably less intense if your if your micro isn't a potato like mine, but you know, sometimes you got to make do with what you got in life. So, yeah, we're just going to keep a bunch of bills. Even if we're not gathering resources the old-fashioned way, we're going to need them to build the wonder. Oh, yeah, this guy. And the house, the tower, will, or the town center, there we go, will also uh, provide an okay amount of covering fire. Looks like the Kolathiri Raja doesn't have that many upgrades. You can just keep working away at buildings. Oh yeah, the Hindu pirates. Let's go. Let's go see what they're all about. Even though I already know exactly what it is. We're just waiting for a lead organ gun. Because we're greedy. Should be right here. Up oh, a little bit further. Ah, <laughs> oh, the illustrious Don Francisco. 
Very illustrious. Recover my ship stolen from me by the Zamorin, and I will pledge myself to your cause. Just get us close to an enemy building, and we will give our lives for the cause. Again, wrong campaign. All right, let's get a roll in here. Actually, have enough for a castle now. Enough stone, obviously. The one resource is that castles costs. But whenever you're fighting enemy units as opposed to just like solely knocking down buildings, it's really nice to have the Fatorias in the back. Just giving you something. Why am I not converting this? No, don't kill it! Damn it. I'm a dum dum. I think we're gonna build a wonder somewhere around here. Oh, let's get a uh, Lorenzo. Or Lawrence. Can I get a couple more monks as well? Monks, organ guns, trebuchets, bombard cannons, those sorts of things. Oh, lots of things that cost gold. Portuguese aren't terrible without gold. Uh, they miss Hussar and they miss Squires, which is like the Squires thing is like really random and annoying. But other than that, they have fully upgraded trash. Hello! I, I knew I wanted more monks, but I didn't think I would get a, a justification that quickly. <laughs> of course, I convert the low HP one because I'm a very smart gamer. That's right, organ guns can't actually regarrison inside castles because they're siege units. I honestly think I can get a couple more Fatorias. Like, we really don't need the pop space. Also, we did get up to 200 pop, so it seems like you do need to build, like, a castle to get up to that max pop limit. Anyway, onward and upward. I don't have a hotkey for Fatorias. They are pretty tanky. Considering they are literally fortresses. I'm pretty sure that's the direct translation. Siege engineers. Siege. 
They make the same sound same sound as trade workshops, in case you didn't notice. Which I would guess you would not notice, because who who but me would want to pay attention to such useless information? Getting these few conversions on the, the camels is especially nice because it helps against rams. Elephant archers I will take. Whoa! Where the hell are you guys going? You're really going for that bombard tower? No! At least get the elephant archer. Got it! But yes, in case you guys didn't know, Siege Engineers does affect organ guns, as they are siege units. Also, let's go convert this guy, which is Tomoji's pirate ship which is also a dragon ship. I think four is going to be a good number. Bombard cannon, more organ guns, and this guy is on no attack stance, so you actually have to switch him back to attack stance, that's something I remembered. Yes, and we will receive more gold from raising so long as Tomoji is alive. Which is pretty nifty. Also, his army's pretty good. They all have plus seven attack for some reason. Anyway, Bombard Towers. Didn't I order a Bombard Ken? Yes, I did. Anyway, this should give us a ton of resources. These guys all do a ton of damage. They don't have the greatest armor in the world, but yeah, they do a ton of damage. And we get more gold so long as Timoji's alive. So these guys, I can just have raid up and down the outside and be getting a ton of resources. Anyway, let's start this puppy. And by puppy, I mean wonder. That's a Fatoria. Hey, it's that one tower that's in Lisbon. Anyway, we're going to ring it with Bombard Towers. Because I've played enough standard victory win conditions in my day. Oh, Archibus. That's good. Upward. We'll slow push simultaneously, but this is why I go for the wonder victory on this one, is because otherwise it just takes such a long time. I hear a monk sound. Oh! It's a blind lame priest. Do these give us gold? Oh, yes they do. 
That seems exploitable. Oh well. I guess no, they 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 dodged. Okay, I won't go out of my way to kill them then. This is a rather slow and terrifying army. Let's just get some more Bombard Towers. And this is why the Fatoria was originally OP as hell, by the way. Because a lot of people, you know, like to play those FFA games, or just big long team games, and a lot of lower players, noobs, whatever you want to call them, uh, the lower level players in general are not as aggressive because they're not as confident in attacking. And so games tend to go super long and people like the big epic fights and whatever. So in those sorts of situations, Portuguese were almost laughably overpowered. Because you just generate a huge amount of gold and stone. I guess. Also, this guy somehow gets war elephants. I'm not really sure how. Just get some more monks though. But yeah, I don't think either of these guys have infinite resources, which is always nice. Oh, hi, Kananor. I didn't know you had a hunting wolf there trapped. Sorry, wolf brethren. Ha. Try being kept in the game that way or something. Alright, Wonder almost done. I mean, we could just sit back and wait to win, but that's boring. <laughs> Even if we're going for the Wonder Win doesn't mean we uh, can't still be pushing. It's more engaging than me just slamming times 8 speed and building a few more Bombard Towers. And if, imagine if Genitors actually had this much attack. They'd be so strong. 11 base attack. That's one more than an Arbalost. Oh, whoops. Didn't mean to put you there. But yes, Fatorias do generate infinite stone, which is why they are still overpowered in some situations, and why I think that... Design-wise, they're a fund fundamentally broken concept. I feel like Fatorias will pretty much always either be too weak or too strong. I feel like there is very little room for balance. Like, they either won't generate enough resources and won't be worth it, you'd just rather have villagers, or they generate enough resources where you can just chill with several of them and then win in every single post-imp scenario without gold. I think Portuguese, honestly, they, they, they suffer from a fair amount of design problems. I think they're just kind of boring. Yeah, the organ guns are fun, but Fatorias aren't really viable outside of, like, this specific context. And, like, one of their bonuses is free cartography, and a lot of people play with uh, Allied Vision, which is essentially cartography from the start of the game. So that's kind of useless. Karak is useless in land maps. So is the Caravel. Oh, 
Also, the free Carto is completely useless in 1v1s. Archibus is good, but it comes in so late that you rarely get it in most games. And then their, their only real bonus at that point is just their organ gun unique unit, which is good and it's fun, but it's that and their gold unit discount, which is useful, but not exciting. So you just get with a left the sort of very generic Civ feeling. That, yeah, this sort of thing is fun, but let's be honest, this isn't something you'll get, you're going to get to see in multiplayer games. At least not uh, most of the time. Which is why I'm enjoying doing it now. Because I love spamming Bombard Towers everywhere. Even though Bombard Towers are eh, borderline broken in situations where you can go for them. Not as OP as back when they used to deal melee damage, though. That was an Age of Kings, and Bombard Towers were actually just absurd. In case you're wondering why that would be OP, um... Cannon Galleons, Bombard Cannons, they both deal melee damage, and, like, that's fine, but if you give it to a Bombard Tower, it means that they're doing two to three shots killing rams, siege rams. Which means that... You can either use trebuchets, which require a castle, or bombard cannons, which a lot of civs don't have. <laughs> so that one was definitely uh, a, a very necessary change that came with the Conquerors way, way back in the day. I wonder if we're we are receiving stone. I feel like, yeah, I feel like we're definitely receiving stone for destroying buildings. I'm like, if if four Fatorias can generate enough stone to, for this much bombard tower spam, I feel like maybe we've just been completely undervaluing them the whole time. But it seems like, yeah, we're we're getting stone from raisings. Damn it! I was about to just insta lock Portuguese every single game on ladder. Alas. But it goes to show that Fatorias plus the raisings in this scenario give you plenty of income. And I, th I think it's a fun concept. Because look at this. This is just nonsense. Look at these things. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like, once you hold off the first wave, you're kind of fine. But at least that first wave is tricky, and it's at least a fun concept. I do, I do like this campaign. Just like overall, I think the Francisco campaign is, like I said, one of the stronger ones overall of the new ones. Of the new ones, I'd say my favorites are... This one I think is good. Bayanong I think is good. I like Kotian a lot. Honestly, all of the last con campaigns are pretty good. Um, Sunjata's okay. I think it's as good as the other ones. Not a fan of Tariq, Yodi, Leloy. Suryavarman, Gajamada. Yeah, not, not a fan of any of those ones. Yeah, this is why it's, uh, I prefer to go with the Wonder Route this one. 
Because, like, we'll eventually break through here. But they have a really strong army. Like, the war elephants they're getting for free from somewhere or no- Oh no! No! Lorenzo! Escape! Escape! No, run away! These gates aren't open to us. I'm gonna have to go the long way around. To Moji! Wait, Archibus. Oh crap. Tomoji, no! Heroes! Oh, hey, that's a lot of organ guns. Well, let's see how far they can break through our uh, 16 bombard towers just in that one screen. Hello, random elite genitor. <gasps> no! Why did you. Rip. I mean, we don't lose. You can totally lose him, but feels bad, man. Take out my vengeance! <laughs> oh, this is why Bombard Towers are so OP in general. Anyway, we're just about to win this one. Just nine years left. But we at least pushed through all of Kananor. And we would just have to actually take the fight to uh, the Zamorin's camp. Didn't that already happen to somebody? Didn't that happen to the, the Sultan of Kilwa? Didn't he flee with, on a mangy camel? Anyway, here is the Kolothari Raja's camp. There's also, or sorry, uh, this is the Zavoran's camp, and the Kolothari Raja, or Kolothiri Raja rather, has some production buildings down here as well. But it's mostly the Zamoran at this point. Once you take out all the production buildings in Kananor uh, itself. Nothing really in uh, the water. So, volume ago. Though the Zamorin limped away from Kananor bloodied, his resolve was untouched by Arcana. In driving men to war, gold can be more powerful than God. For centuries, the wealth of the Indies had passed through the Indian Ocean, carried by Arab, Indian, and Somali merchants to the port cities of Arabia. Egypt and Africa. From there, endless caravans carried wealth across the desert to Alexandria, and then to Istanbul, Venice, and Genoa. By rounding Africa, Portuguese traders had upset the traditional balance of this world. With our forts in India, we cut the trade that had enriched the Muslim sultans and Venetian doge alike. Don Francisco held a knife to the throats of our enemies. And as the lion fed, vultures and jackals appeared. Frickin' jackals, man. I guess this is how many resources we got in raisins. Anyway, that was Estado de India. Last and finally for Francisco will be a son's blood. See you guys then.